I felt somebody, something was watching me right there and uh, we've all pointed to the same spot <laughs> where so and like, my heart has just stopped why is your heart that just wasn't the security guards just walked in <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't funny <laughs> well we all think it was so let's have a show of hands everybody thinks that was funny put your hands up yeah. well that's all us we all thought it was funny Andrew yeah, anyway very funny. I'll give you five minutes to go and change your trousers <laughs> um, I'll be back with you in a minute Andy uh, you, you sit tight and if anything starts watching you do give us a shout um, if if you've got any ghost stories that you want to tell us, any places that you've worked or work at the moment that you think may be haunted, maybe you have the same experience as somebody watching you, anything spooky at all, let's get ourselves rigid uh, on Halloween at Beacon Radio. This is the number you dial. Call now. Call now. Call now. With your ghost. With your ghost. With your story. Okie dokie, we've got Andrew, Horace and Scott to go to. Just an update on the ghost-busting activities. The next Beacon Radio outside ghost-busting broadcast is going to be a week on Friday at the Malt House in Ironbridge. That's number one. And then uh, two weeks this Friday, we are in Shrewsbury at the uh, Dun Cow. It was a terrible thing when I, ra I rang up the operator today and said, uh, <laughs> can you give me, she said, what number is it? I said, Dun Cow. And it, it just sounded, it just came out completely wrong and I think she thought I might have been insulting her. Anyway, it's the Dun, which is Old English for, um, Brown. We'll be there. That's apparently got about four ghosts and the malt house, there's the ghost of a woman hangs around there. So that'll be a week on Friday, two weeks on Friday, if you're in the area. And one of you and see us, we'll be down there broadcasting live from 10 o'clock with the midnight line, of course. At midnight? Well, it would be really, wouldn't it? I mean, no point having a midnight line and starting at past four in the morning. Okay, let's start scaring ourselves, stupid. Let's have a word with Andrew. Andrew! <laughs> Good morning, Ian. You're reading the Conservative Manifesto, by the sound of things. Oh, I think I am, yes. Let me just check with the head of cock up, see if anything <laughs> nasty's happening upstairs. Yes. yes. It, it, is. it is happening. Um, I just I was just came out to make see where the security guard had, had gone. Yeah. And I've just come back to the, to the door of the studio I was in, and it's locked itself. No joke, it's locked. You're joking. I'm not joking. <laughs> oh yeah. Honestly, it's there. Look, locked. Have you got the key? I haven't got the key. Unfortunately. <laughs> Where's the key? Security guard's got it. Hopefully. Well, go and get it. Oh, no, 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 no! I'm quite happy to sit out here all night. <laughs> well, hold on a minute. How do you know it hasn't locked the two? It's obviously locked itself. Yeah! The door to the control. I mean, I it's coming with the key. Oh, lucky old you. Can you just hold on, on a I've second? Got, I've uh, got a witness. That door's locked, isn't it? I can hear it's locked. Yeah, it's locked. Yeah, it's locked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I never went up there. <laughs> He's now leaving me all alone again. So we'll go on, open it and it's go open in. now. We'll go in. We'll go in. Why are you chicken or something? <laughs> Anything? Mm, nope. It locked itself. <laughs> I'm not joking. It's locked itself. Well, Andrew, you stay there, mate, and uh, this is going better than I hoped. It really, honestly. Yeah. Can... I'm not joking. You swear on Jason Donovan's life? Yeah. And who wouldn't? I swear. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, mate. Well, then give us a shout if anything else happens. Right. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll keep you on pre-fade so I can hear you, uh, I can hear you scream. Okay, Andrew. Right. Well, i got to say, first of all, that I don't really believe in ghosts, but, um, something did happen that I can't explain. What's that? Right, well, I've got to admit, like, it scared me a bit. Now, my house is usually a quiet house, you know, it's one of those which is never very noisy. But on this night, you know, the silence was, it was absolutely loud. I know it sounds a bit silly, but, you know, it's one of those nights when the silence is ringing in your ears. Yeah. And it was also a very, very dark night as well, which is kind of strange around here because we've got good lighting. Anyway, it happened as I was going to go to bed. Right? I had a sudden feeling of being watched, right? And it was very, very strong. Like, you know, I'm kind of ill will feeling, evil, you know. Yeah. And I was standing in the hallway of the house and I looked into the room opposite of what I'd just come out of and there was no light on the back wall. Now, this is unusual 
because <laughs> there's a street light outside. I'm sorry about this, Andrew. I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing at the fact that I can hear the head of cockles and he sounds like he's wetting himself up there. <laughs> what, 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 what's happening to you? <laughs> no. Then we'll get back to you in a minute. <laughs> sorry, Andrew. You, you, this evil thing was watching you. Right. Well, I looked on the back wall and there was nothing, no light. But there's a street light more or less outside our house. Yeah. Yeah. So I looked out of the hall window, but the light was shining. Yeah? Yeah. So I thought this was a bit weird. And anyway, I thought nothing more of it, so I went upstairs and went into the bathroom. But this feeling of being watched, it didn't subside. It got worse. You know, and as I came out of the bathroom, I looked back down the stairs. And in the stairwell where the hall window was, that had all gone black as well. I mean, pitch black, you couldn't see a thing. So, I mean, this this scared me a bit, this did, because this feeling was getting stronger all the time. So I just ran into my room and shut the door. I mean... Were you on your own in the house, were you? No, I mean, my parents, they were in their bedroom, you know, asleep. This may appear to be a completely dumb question, but why didn't you get them waking up? I sure as hell would <laughs> Well, you know, I didn't want to bother them, because I kept telling myself I was being a silly old woman, you know, I mean, get frightened about nothing. But, uh, it, you know, it did worry me a bit, so um, I got in bed anyway. And, uh, I read for a bit to try and calm my nerves, you know, mm-hmm. before I could get to sleep. And it was about seven minutes past twelve, you know, and this silence is still really loud. And I, I thought I heard something, you know, so I sat up, you know, stopped straight, you know, thought, oh, God, you know, what's happening? And I listened really, really hard. And in the background... Just outside the door, I could hear creaks, like footsteps, going up and down the landing. Now, they were only light, so they couldn't have been either of my parents. Who were asleep. Who were asleep, and I would have heard the bedroom door opening anyway, especially in that silence, but I didn't. Right, and there were footsteps going up and down the landing, and they were only light, like a very small child. So I thought, oh, this is stupid, this is, so I got up out of bed, right and gripped the door handle as if I, you know, to open it and tell myself once and for all that there was nothing out there. And as I touched that handle, such such a feeling of ill will hit me. I thought, oh, no way, there's no way I'm going through that door. You know, there's absolutely no way in the world, for love nor money, I wouldn't have gone through that door. You, you just sensed that? Yeah, it was really weird. I've, I've never had anything like that happen to me before, but when I touched that door, the whole... Evening, this bad feeling was compounded in one, sort of ran up my arm. Terrifying. And I, I just flew back into bed and sat there with the light on, you know, and sort yeah, of singing. Thing. Singing very loud songs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what like I that. do. I'm not scared of you. Uh, no. Has it, uh, has it happened to you before or since? Well, not that exactly, but my mum has seen something in this house with the same feeling of watchfulness. I think you just reduced your selling price by about 10,000 quid, didn't you? <laughs> well, don't worry, I'm not going to reveal the address over there, you know, but... Well, what's um, she seen? Well, she was in the bathroom as well at the time, you know, having a wash, and the door was open behind her, she was alone in the house, and in the doorway, you know, because she got this feeling of being watched, so she turned round, and in the doorway, what she tells me was this black figure, just a black figure, no, no definable features as such, just a black shape of a, a man, just black and just standing there watching. Now, it wasn't an illusion or anything like that, because as she stared at it, it didn't go away. It stayed there, and only as she started walking towards it did it vanish. And she saw the same thing later on, that very same afternoon, when she'd gone downstairs and was sitting in the front reading the paper, and she looked up and she saw this figure looking as if it was peeking around the door. A sneaky peeky ghost, eh? Mm, yes. Well, what do you make of it all, then? Because it's very difficult when, you, when you've actually... If you've ever experienced somebody either watching you or you've got a feeling about something... Yeah. It's, A, very difficult to explain. Yeah, you're damn right. But it's even more difficult to dismiss. <laughs> yeah. Why, why did you suddenly feel yeah. like that? Something must prompt it. What? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, there hadn't been any really nasty films on the television. You know, I mean, I hadn't been reading any particularly nasty books or anything like that. But I think what started it off was the immense silence of the evening when the telly'd been turned off. You know, and everything like that. And the silence just come down like a curtain. It was frightening. You know, and... You no know problems about living there now? Well, no, not since. Um, 
we've been all, all right for about six months now and absolutely had nothing happening. You know, which I'm pretty glad of, you know. No, I'm, not, I'm not surprised. Listen, thanks for that. If anything else happens, Andrew, yeah. give us a call at your local ghostbusting station. Don't worry, I will. Okay, mate, yeah, thanks, thanks for that. Thanks very much, bye. Cheers. Okay, let's go back now to the head of cock-ups, situated in the reputedly haunted bit of Beacon Radio. Andrew. It's very quiet up here, you know. Too quiet? Yeah. All that I can hear is the uh, clock ticking that's above my head, because I'm actually sat on the floor cross-legged in the corner. <laughs> so, oh. I can, so I can see all angles of the room. <laughs> <laughs> so nothing can come up behind me. I think I'd have posted a guard. <laughs> um, whereabouts are you, then? Um, as you walk through the door into the control room, I'm sat behind the door. <laughs> Near to the door, so I can get out very quickly if I have to. Now, when I was I was listening to you while uh, I was talking to that last caller, and you didn't seem a very happy little head of cock-ups at all. No. <laughs> Why? What's happening? <laughs> Nothing happening, fortunately. I think. Except the door's locked itself. The door locked itself while I was out of the room. I, what happened? I you, when you went to the first call, I think I went back into the reception area outside. Yeah. Uh, to see where the security guard had gone and he was unlocking the other studio which is the studio we feel were watched from mm -hmm. and I walked into that studio oh oh yeah when I went in I turned the lights on in the studio and when I came back this door had locked but now the lights are off in that studio <laughs> so I can see through the windows and <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to stop here for an hour. You don't, no, you don't. Any other 40 minutes till Pete Clem comes up. Well, it's all happening to Andrew, isn't it? Oh, oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not clever like you, Andrew. Thank you. I'm sat in a brightly lit studio as Andy is sat currently in the haunted part of the building, although it's a bit that's allegedly haunted anyway. Uh, I'll tell you, Andrew, I don't believe all that rubbish about it being haunted and oh, I, de no, I defy no, that no, ghost no. if there is a ghost no. I defy that ghost no. to come Please in now no. locking no. doors anybody could have locked a door anybody could have put the lights out so we want concrete evidence by one o'clock that that ghost exists okay fine taunt it a bit something like that you'll be alright don't worry about it I'll keep you on pre and if I hear you scream I'll uh <laughs> probably just ignore it let's go back to the lines now and talk to Horace Horace Good evening. Good evening, Horace. So would you trade places with a head of cock-ups right at the moment? <laughs> You've got to be joking. That's more or less what I was thinking. <laughs> you can stay there for as long as you like. Mm. Right. Which, is, which isn't very long, I suppose, Andrew, is it? <laughs> Sorry? It's not very long. You didn't. You don't wish to stay there for no, very no. long. Well, if you survive 40 minutes, all well and good, right? Yeah, it'd be all right. It'd be okay. Still was locking themselves. You ever heard the like of it? <laughs> Actually, uh, just thinking about it, the door that locked itself, that isn't the one that's incredibly difficult to lock, is it, Andrew? Yes, the one you, ha you have trouble with every night. Okay, Horace, you got a ghost story for us. Yeah, um, this was relayed to me by um, uh, a fellow colleague, and it was um, actually reported in one of the local newspapers some years back. Uh, he was working in a project in Wolverhampton. This guy, is, uh, he runs an uh, absolutely massive project in residential work. And he's also an ex-policeman, so I don't think he is the kind of person to flights of fancy and imaginings and such like. Well, if he was in the West Midlands Serious Crime Squad, he probably Maybe, would. maybe, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> OK, a little bit of radical humour there. Yeah. Um, this project, um, coming up, it's been on old um, rectory kind of, you know, by these priests used to live and stuff. And there was lots of different incidents where people had been coming out of the rooms and um, quite frightened, uh, running down the stairs, screaming. And one of the occurrences that used to happen quite quite often was well, when I was walking up the stairs, this building was like three or four flights, three or four flights of stairs. As you proceeded up the stairs, the lights behind you would start to go out. The more you, the more you went up the stairs. So sounds good. Say, sounds good so far. So as if to say, like, okay, it's going up and semi like, you know. Um, and uh, some of the guys have actually thought that they, people had touched them as they've been walking up the stairs. And all kinds of different horrible things had happened to different people. It culminated in the people, uh, the, like the residents, that saw the shadow moving about to and fro along the corridors and the guy I worked with he said enough's enough 
went going to get a priest and they got in the car and the residents actually saw this like dark figure, this like shady figure, like he sort of moved over out of the building to the car and got into the back of the car with them. I mean, they couldn't see this. They were just getting into the car. The other, the other saw this from the window. Hold on, the ghost got in the car with them? He got in the car. Um, they drove, drove off. And he said, the only thing, like, the way I can exp uh, explain the feeling... The ghost got in the car with them? got in the car. That's amazing. The what an idle ghost. Yeah. He got into the car. As I was driving along, he says, he felt absolutely nauseous. And that it was like um, 100 degrees in the car. Inside the car, it was really, wor really warm. Yeah. They just about got to um, the Dyson in um, in Birmingham, and they got there, uh, run up to the to the priest's uh, home, like uh, banging on the door, and they said, well, yeah, "I know you think we're mad, you know, but what we're experiencing is it, it's just it's just we can't explain it." And the priest said, "No, I don't, I don't believe you're mad. Um, what he was actually experiencing was the um, materializing of ectoplasm." And what, what, is that some sort of plaster? Well... <laughs> oh no, that's elastoplast, yeah. isn't it? And what, what's ectoplasm and why should it be manifesting it itself? Was, it was trying to, it was trying to, um, it was trying to make the crash the car, but that's what I thought. It was trying to stop them getting to the, getting to the, uh, police line. Uh, it culminated with the actual project being, um, uh, an exorcism being taking place. Yeah. Uh, an exorcism? Yeah, it was, uh, the, the project was, uh, you know, the police came round, they blessed all the, um, exits to the to the house and the, they said well obviously you can come out you can come and go as he wishes and they they sealed him in and uh, then they went in and then they performed the exorcism or oh, everybody standing in a group in a circle and you know the crosses over the head coming down and everything I've read about them yeah in the juice of the world yes yes this, uh, it's actually happened in Wolverhampton this day did it? yeah so what, what was the end result of it all? Um, it ceased, it stopped. Um, this only comes to, this only comes to, to, to my life because when he came to my project, he, he was experiencing a few weird things. Another, it's another old police building as well. Um, residential arms are used in, you know, uh, done up from old refugees and things. And he was experiencing a few odd things happening at this project. And he got us all in the office and he says, uh, what's going on, you know? Um, I've had problems like this before for the project, and he was concerned, like, you know, that he's going to have the same thing happen again. And this is how it came to life. And it was pretty, pretty frightening. How yeah. did anybody explain it? Did they attempt to explain it, or...? Well, the priest, um, actually said that it was, it was some kind of spirit, um, malevolent, you know. It was, he said, whatever it was, it, it was not good. It was possibly evil, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Do you think um, there is a difference between good and evil? I mean, I, I'm not totally convinced. I mean, okay, I, I, there's, a, there's a few things happen to me, but yeah. at the end of it, I've got to say I don't believe that yeah. there's ghosts. The actual project where they uh, did the exorcism, um, one of the uh, residents in there, he, he stormed out the building late at night. He refused to go back in. He says, there's been a murder, there's been a murder. Um, he says, there's a woman up there dead, been stabbed. And of course, they had to get the police in. The police came down and checked the whole of the rooms. Nothing was found. They went back into the history of the place, and uh, there was, used to be a hunchback who used to live there, and he actually killed a prostitute in there. He uh, knifed her, yeah. We made a film about that, didn't we? <laughs> Friday the 14th, something like that, yeah. I was thinking about the hunchback in Notre Dame. <laughs> yeah, but it's just actually, actually a true story, and, yeah. I don't know. What do you make of him? Do you believe it wholesale, or do you think people's imaginations are running riot, or. Well, you know? Uh, the priests thought that it was enough to get involved, you know, serious enough to get involved. I think there must have been something there. There must have been something there for them to get involved, to take it serious. OK then, Horace. Thanks for that. You've probably made a good few hundred thousand people have trouble sleeping for the rest of the night. Don't worry, it's only Halloween. There's only loads of sort of spirits and ghosts and ghoulies and all that sort of thing lurching around the planet. You got a ghost story? Call now. Call now. Call now. With your ghost. With your ghost. With your story. <laughs> okay, let's go back to the head of cock ups, who's singing to himself. <laughs> Just trying to keep myself company, really, because it's very quiet up here. Very quiet. Anything yeah. watching you or. Mm, can't feel a thing. Don't sense anything. No? Nobody watching you? No. Nope. Didn't you just close the door and legged it? Sorry? That ran away. 
Me or the ghost? The ghost. Scared of me. I think knowledge. that was it for the night, dear. <laughs> Dunno. <laughs> I hope not. I hope so. Okay, well, give us a shout if anything spooky happens to you. Let's have a word now. We've got Scott, Jean, and...